you must be careful about the words you use or the words you allow to be used in your house. Words are things. You must be careful. Careful about calling people out of their names, using racial pejoratives and sexual pejoratives and all that ignorance. Don't do that. It's time to talk about it. Pull up a chair and take a seat. We're serving up recipes for life. With Hampton University's Dr. Richard Mason and Dr. Tamara Williams. Welcome to the Sunday Brunch. This is Dr. Tamara Williams. And this is Dr. Richard Mason. And welcome once again to another edition of Sunday Brunch. It's always so good to be back at the table with my sister. It's <laughs> always good to dine with you. We've never had a bad meal. No, not at all. You know, food, you know, I always say, you know me, a bad meal is a meal that didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I like to eat. You know? we, we do, we do. Good food, though, good food. And, always. And good conversation. So how have you been? I've been pretty good. You know, always on the go. But, you know, life is good. They say it's better to be, you know, seen than 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 uh than viewed so yes uh, so every day I get up and I can you've been seen quite a bit listen all over <laughs> <the place. laughs> as long as we're seeing ourselves we're doing something exactly, so. exactly. Yeah, it has been very busy it has been very hectic even in the summertime it's still rocking and rolling but yes um I appreciate the fact that we can still go yes exactly being able to get up and go find new things to do, new exciting challenges, and new horizons to explore. Meeting some new people, too. Exactly, exactly. We have somebody good to, for you to meet today. Listen, I'm excited. Just just hearing some of the preliminary stuff in terms of places she, she's been and stuff that she's you doing. You have no idea. And what, what I really love about the conversation that we're going to have today is that... Uh, this could be anybody. Mm-hmm. A lot of times people limit the things that they can do based on the things that they have seen mm-hmm. or they see other people around them doing. And we don't have to limit ourselves based on what somebody we know has mm-hmm. done. We can do the things that are within mm-hmm. us to do. And sometimes when God gives you those gifts, you know, it's not for other people to affirm. It's not their gift. Exactly. And so you get to work and move in your purpose. It's a good feeling. I love mm-hmm. stories where you get to talk about how people can do Exactly. And, you know, moving to your purpose, that's mm-hmm. the thing. You know, I was just sharing with someone uh, last week, and we were just talking in terms of when we were kids, how you used to get in trouble for talking in class all the time. And you'd have to write those sentences, I must not talk, I must not oh, talk. Oh, you wrote those sentences too? Listen, mm-hmm. I really want to go back and tell my teacher now that I get paid to talk. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I was that student too. <laughs> My mom used to tell me, loose lips sink ships, mm-hmm. Monet. Loose lips sink ships. You just exactly. talk so much. You talk so much. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I had made straight A's, but I did. I had a lot to say. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> still do. I was about to say, and still, still do. That, do. That has not changed. Hello, somebody. But they care about it now. They pay for that thing now. Exactly. It's, it's exactly. totally different. It's totally different. But that's what it's about. Even as little kids and as parents, is finding the gifts that your kids have and mm-hmm. not trying to tell them, no, they cannot do that mm-hmm. or no, they should not do that because mm-hmm. you don't know what's in them to do. Exactly. And sometimes if you just step aside, mm-hmm. they can mm-hmm. do some amazing things. Exactly. Because you just never know when a certain dream had been birthed in someone else. And you just have to allow for that that dream to grow and, and exist. And you can see exactly what it can become. And the possibilities are endless. Just like, that bu- look, just like that buffet on? I'm about to go over. <laughs> good buffet. I don't really like buffets as much. I tend to order on the side, but um, this is a good buffet. Yes, it is. And I'm on my way. I got my plate in my hand. So I'm on my way while you introduce our guest. You All already right. know. I got you honey butter and a biscuit. I got you. That's it, bro. All so right. I need. All right. Today at the table with us is the designer extraordinaire, Miss Gwen Wilson. If you do not know Miss Gwen, I'm just saying Google her. That's all I'm going to say is Google her and and get acquainted. It's a lot of times you may not see the people who are in the background doing things. You may not always know who that is is making things happen. But let me tell you, I've seen them make it happen, and I'm so excited. Uh, to have her at the table so she can have that conversation with us like how did she become who she became and um, more importantly that she does more than one thing so a lot of us think that we only can do one thing but we can do as many things as we would like to do and are capable of doing Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. welcome to the table welcome to sunday brunch 
Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad you said something about purpose and being younger. When I was five years old, I knew what I wanted to do. At five? At five, I knew what I wanted to do. And people told me, you can't be a fashion designer. And I remember in third grade, I told my teacher I wanted to be a fashion designer. And she said, no, you can work in a factory. I said, no, I'm going to travel around the world. T- tell them where you're from. Let's start there. Where are I'm you from, from? Um, Pendleton, North Carolina. Look, you, you see the smile uh-huh. that she said? Okay. <laughs> That she country girl P- smile P- came Pendleton out Proud. clear. Pendleton, yeah. Pendleton Proud. Pendleton Proud. <laughs> well, that's, that's where my father retired, but um, he was with 82nd Airborne, and we traveled the world, too. So yeah. that's why I get the tra- love of travel for Okay, yeah. okay. Yes. But you told awesome. your third grade teacher, no, I'm wheel no, design, I, and I'm going to fly around the world. Exactly. And um, my mom was always supportive, and she told me, you know, I could do whatever I put my mind to. And they gave, got me my first sewing machine when I was seven years old. My grandma told me, taught me how to sew when I was five years old. And I've been sewing ever since. Yes, indeed. I ever wore since. some of your designs. I like them. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. So you, you create. Yes. Okay. So okay. How, did, how did you get from North Carolina? So high school, you graduate from high school, then what happened? Well, when I was in high school, I entered a contest, and I won first prize, and that was a trip to Paris, but I didn't want to go to Paris. So the second prize was an internship with Calvin Klein. So mm-hmm. I went and did an internship with Calvin Klein, and that's how everything started. And I stopped for a while because I had my kids and I wanted to be a mom. Mm-hmm. And then I went back and I started doing it again. So you internship with Calvin Klein. Mm-hmm. You went from Pendleton right. to where where did you go to internship with New Calvin? York. New York. Okay. And I have to tell you that I was scared to go to Paris at the time. So I, I took the, <laughs> okay. I, 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 took, honest. Yes. Yeah, I took the second place and I went to um work internship with Calvin Klein. Well, I will tell you this. I, I and maybe it's just me. I don't know all of what in, what was entailed in that trip to Paris, but I would probably say the internship mm-hmm. and getting that experience was probably more valuable than just a trip. It was at mm-hmm. the time because mm-hmm. I got to meet a lot of people, and I got to work with a lot of different brands and um, do Fashion Week and everything else. So it was really great. Wow! Indeed, yeah. that's something that no one you had ever done had been exposed no. to. Mm-hmm. No, and even how how did you even find out about the contest? Um, my high school teacher, mm-hmm. my high school teacher told me about it, and I filled out the application. It was a, a, a countrywide. Um, it was all across the United States, and I won. Oh, <laughs> nice! Yeah. What did you design? Um, a gown. Okay. I love gowns. I love doing red carpet gowns. Yes, indeed. And I think every woman is a princess. And um, mm-hmm. my brand is a Tim. It's everything about me is beautiful because a lot of people don't think. A lot of women don't think they're beautiful. They don't think they're capable of being beautiful. Mm-hmm. But beauty comes from inside. It mm-hmm. doesn't come from anything that you buy. Anything else. It's your spirit that's beautiful. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, I like the fact that in third grade you said I'm going to be a designer and travel the world, mm-hmm. and you had someone who was trying to be a dream killer. Exactly. But but guess what? You didn't allow that dream killer to kill your dream, and that's important. Well, there have been dream killers all you know all through. Um, the process, you know, you need to stop doing this, you need to get a real job, you need to do blah, blah, blah. But they don't know all the stuff I did while they were saying get a real job. I was actually working on a real job. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Th- I think it comes with the perspective that you go to you go to college, you get the job, the corporate job, and then you mm-hmm. work so long, then you retire. Mm-hmm. But we have to, you know, change that situation now. That's mm-hmm. not everybody's story. I know. And mm-hmm. everybody can have a different story. Right. So I like that you have a different one. Everybody doesn't have to go down that same pathway. Right. Mm-hmm. And so for you, you got that internship. Mm-hmm. And then what was the next step after their internship? What did you do? Well, I did. I went to college. I did graduate from college. So um, shout out to, where's your college? Virginia Tech. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Shout out to Virginia Tech. And hokey, so, hokey, hokey. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated. I, um, I started at A&T, and then I went to Virginia Tech. Okay. okay. So, so you went both worlds. Got yeah, you. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. in both worlds. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just something about fashion design. I love everything about it. Everything about the clothes, putting it together. Um, everything about fashion I love. And um, then I, I did the international show, and that's when it really hit, when everything just blew up. Mm-hmm. Because um, they invited me to different places, and I was like, I'm not going. First of all, like, I'm not going. And then I was like, why not? Mm-hmm. And so um, I was the first African-American designer to show in Dubai. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I was um, on the council to help them regulate their laws because their laws and everything was so strict, and everything had to be process so they could actually wear garments on the runway to show their skin and everything. Mm-hmm. 
That's right, because of the culture. Mm Mm-hmm. Culture as well as the law that right. exists in their country. Right. That's interesting because you know when you think about fashion and fashion shows and stuff like that or whatever, and even when they have these shows in other countries, I guess you really have to follow the mm-hmm. laws of the land that you're in in exactly. terms of you know what how you're, you're doing. designing and what can exactly. be displayed. Right. right. So certain things had to be fully covered or could not. No, they had, they changed the laws for that. Oh mm-hmm. wow. Yeah. They changed the laws because the Dubai wants to be uh, the next up and coming fashion capital of the world, mm. and so they are hiring a lot of people to come in and work with them. Because we work with um, I don't know if you've seen it or not Real Housewives of Dubai. We work with that show too. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Housewives of Dubai! They done took mm-hmm. them. Oh, mm. <laughs> yes, indeed. Mm. Yes, indeed. So college came, fashion yes. shows came, yes. and if they were asking you to come and travel to different places, and initially your fear was, no, I don't want to go there. I know I don't want to fly. I don't want to be there. But then you start saying, why not? Why not? I said, why, why not? not? And what it, do you think was holding you back before? Basically, um, it was, it was, you know, the unknown. I guess mm. you want to say the fear of the unknown. But once you start researching it, that's one thing you have to do is you have to research everything. And mm-hmm. you start researching it and find out the facts, not just what you, the hearsay. Mm-hmm. Then everything is fine. Just like now when I tell people I go to Dubai, they're like, well, it's nothing but terrorists there. What? I'm like, they're not interested in terrorists. They're interested in making money. <laughs> and that's the bottom line there. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Well, yeah, definitely research and understanding for yourself, not just what you've heard, but reading yes. to, to have more clarity. But you need a little bravery out there, too, because mm-hmm. you're doing things that have never been done before, which means you may have to go some places right. that people you know have never have never gone before. Right. And so once you stomach that and mm-hmm. say, okay, I'm going to step out on here a little bit. Exactly. And you learn the language. You learn the, basic, how to commu- the basics of how to communicate and what not to say and where not to go. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, because they still have their rules and regulations and you still have to follow them. It doesn't matter if you're an American or who you are, that when you're in that country, whatever country that may be, that you follow their rules. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite material to work with? I love everything. I can't, I can't narrow it down to one favorite. I, so I, do you, are you drawing out your designs before you make them? Are you? Do you have other people helping you make them at that time? It's just me. It's just you. It's just me. Most of the time, it's just it's like whatever comes in my mind. It's just like free form. I don't really draw them out. I just start working on them. And they come out that way. Okay. Okay. So you do it just, from, you see it in your head, then you make it happen with your hands. Right. Okay. See, I remember when I was a kid watching my mother, she did a little sewing and, and she would have those little patterns, those mm-hmm. little brown, little, little, yeah. little yeah, she used to, <laughs> yeah, she used to do those little things and I would always say like, what are you doing? You know, she have all of those stuff stretched out or mm-hmm. whatever. So is that what it's like, you, you know, for you? For me? No, I have a mannequin. Okay. And I fit the mannequin. And um, I have mannequins that you can size them to the person that you're making the, the gowns or whatever for. And that's why everything I do is custom. And it fits you. It will fit you like a glove, I'll tell you. Even if I haven't seen you, as long as you send me your measurements, I can fit you according to the mannequin. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It's custom. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm impressed. It's one of a kind. <laughs> All right. Now, you just do gowns? Do you do I suits? Do, I do suits. I do a lot of other things, too. You do big boy suits? I mean, because, you know, I got, you it's know, custom. I got she's big got boy American. pounds, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, I have to ask these questions, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah. We do all types of clothing. We do um, also do for NFL and NBA. We do, like, the jackets that you see mm-hmm. when they're coming in for the awards and everything. We do those. Mm-hmm. Oh. People don't know what people do and don't do. Mm-hmm. They have not a clue how you move. Mm-hmm. And I'm also a photographer, too. So. Yes. Yeah. See, see, Gwen come here so humble, you know what I'm saying? That, that's what, Let me find her. She's like, she come like a bowl of grits. She got shrimp, gumbo, and, and everything in this bowl here. Indeed. Exactly. More moves, less announcements. And, and you, most people don't ever really know who they're in the presence of. You know, if you're not a person that's opening up and saying everything that you do, people make all kinds of assumptions, but they mm-hmm. never really understand. And it's really no limit to what you can do. No, that's just not. a little bit of the things you do. That's not even like an ice. Nah. In the cup of what she actually right. does, you know, but you can do these type of things. People say only do one thing or you no. can only do that. 
That's not the truth. The sky's the limit. It is. Mm -hmm. And what is a sky? I know. Mm -hmm. It's open venue. Wait, what you talking about? Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you blend all of this here now? Because I'm hearing, you know, not just a designer, but a custom designer. Mm -hmm. But I'm also hearing now you do photography. Mm -hmm. You you mentioned doing the shows in Dubai. You you. Um, and those are runway shows, I'm assuming, right. you know, and so red carpet kind of things. But then also I heard a little bit of the, the ethics and the law component to mm -hmm. this stuff as well. So right. how do you blend all of and, this? And it's another piece missing. She's a whole teacher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm a whole teacher. A whole <laughs> teacher. Like, not a, a whole kind of teacher. sub, and I may come in every now and then. That's right. She's mentioned Kingsport High School. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I right. love Kingsport High School. I really do, though. But um, the thing is, it's scheduling. Mm -hmm. I have a lot. I have to schedule a lot. And um, by being a teacher, it gives me the flexibility of being mm -hmm. playing around. Like, summer. summers are free. Mm -hmm. Weekends are free. Holidays are free. So I do all my traveling and everything, like, in between time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I, that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring her on the show as well because we're into education. Yes. And you know, yeah. a lot of times people are complaining about the money and the salaries that teachers make, or teachers can only do this, but teachers can do many different things. Many things. All of us at this table teach and do other things as mm -hmm. well. And so, you know, these type of jobs are necessary. We need people with experience to teach our kids that love the life and have lived the life and know how to, you know, mm -hmm. apply these things. We need mm -hmm. those people to teach our children and do things on the weekend to help them, mm -hmm. you know, relieve some of that stress and then things that they enjoy and bring those opportunities mm -hmm. back to our kids. And that's another thing um, about partnership. I have um, sponsors and they pay for all my things at school. They pay for, um, I, I don't have to fill out any type of request or anything because anything I need, they get it for me. I know mm -hmm. that's right. And so my, my kids are so spoiled. Mm -hmm. They are, I mean, my sponsors <laughs> treat my kids really well and when it comes to scholarships or whatever um just my business alone gave out twenty two hundred twenty five hundred dollars in scholarships and then the um the businesses that i work with they gave scholarships to the kids too so it's it's like you know it's 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 really teacher heaven for me because <laughs> anything that i need to teach usually teach the kids that they sponsor whether it's equipment for my class whether it's supplies um well, it's anything. You know, mm -hmm. if, if a child has a personal need and their family can't really get it together or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, they need a little help, then I go to one of my business sponsors and I say, hey, can you help this child? Mm -hmm. And I've never had to say no to anything. Well, when you're good to people and they know mm -hmm. you're trying to mm -hmm. help people, right? they will look out. And yeah. you're providing some great opportunities for for these kids. Oh, let me tell you, during the pandemic, when everybody was, you know, when we were doing the virtual, mm -hmm. we did uh, we did our lessons from everywhere. When I say we, I mean, it's not like we have a whole team. I, it's me and my husband. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. I know who your we is. I see your we. And he's yeah. a good, he is a, a shout good out, teammate. Shout out to my Patrick, my lieutenant. Okay. He's the, the lieutenant of um, the police force in Franklin. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's really, you know, he's my security. He's my everything. So He does his job well. He does. He really does. All right, all right. So tell me, what, what do you teach at King's Ford? I teach fashion design and independent living. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. awesome. And we do entrepreneurship. We do um, a lot of things about, but mainly I, I try to get them to focus on what they really want to do in life. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they say, "Oh, you have to be this or you have to be that." But what is your dream? You know, what is you know? That's what we start out with. What do you want to do with your life? Mm -hmm. You know, if you mm -hmm. could, if if money was no object, what would you be doing right now? Mm -hmm. And where would you be? And why are you not going that way now? Mm -hmm. You know, that we have so many opportunities for our children, our young people, but they only see one thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't see themselves as entrepreneurs. We have, um, even in our program that I teach, we have entrepreneurship, and everybody has to start their own business, even if it's on paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of students that, you know, that's what they're doing now. They're doing their own business. Well, you know, we are truly living with the unique generation of students right now. Exactly. It seems like gone are the days where you get a job and you stay there for 30 right. years and retire. Right. You know, these kids are... One, doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. But two, if it's not what they want, they're okay with, I'm not coming in tomorrow. Right. Okay, well, will you be in? No, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, today's my last day. Right. Do you know I mean? That's their mentality. Exactly. And that you know? gives me anxiety. That's how I know I'm not a part of that generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm like, wait a minute. I, yeah. I need my checks to come in steady. Exactly. Yes. And yes. I'm ready to receive them. Right. Mm -hmm. 
But one of the things that I like about this generation is is their boldness yes, to yes. take risks yes. and chance. Chances. They're willing to bet on themselves for exactly. success. And that that's huge. You know, we are, are teaching them to dream no small dreams right. in, the, in, the, in the same vein that we are building hope, mm-hmm. you, you know, with them as far as what we're doing. Because that's the biggest piece. We have to make sure we are... And giving them and, and showing them an area of hope. When we talk about kids who are um, committing suicide and things like that, they 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 have no hope. Exactly. You know? And so we have to take a class of students out of that framework of not having hope to being able to have a dream and 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 having hope that they can take that chance to go after it, whatever it may be, whether it is a job in a particular market, a career, a certification, or going to college. And I'm glad you said that because it's just like the people that I work with. Mm -hmm. If we're doing something and I might do an article on them and they're like, well, Miss Wilson, I don't understand. I said, hold on. I'll call up the person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I'll call up some of the people I design for and let the children talk to the students. I'm sorry, I can't call them children. Let the (laughs) students talk to them. And they'd be like, Miss Wilson, you know such and such and such? Yes, I know them. I'm like, is that really such and such and such? Yes, that's really such and such and such. Mm -hmm. And um, like Paris Fashion Week, we went to Paris Fashion. I went to Paris Fashion Week and um, did a lesson there and was interviewing the people you know that were um in the shows and everything Mm -hmm. and i have students that are models that like i said they all around the world that um anytime that i need somebody to work for me i hire my students because i know them and i know i've trained them and i know their capabilities all right Mm -hmm. opportunities Mm -hmm. opportunities for sure so you know, like Ty, with Tyra Banks and Beverly Johnson and Iman and mm-hmm. all of those folks and everything, mm-hmm. whatever, we'll talk after the show. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That that's the world. Mm-hmm. That's, that's that's the, the world. world that you live in, mm-hmm. and you live in two worlds. Mm-hmm. More than two, really. But and and that's a possibility, and I think that's a beautiful thing. Like you can still work and teach. This. The students, not right. the children. Mm-hmm. The students, but you can still be out there and exist and and have your dreams because yes. that's part of your dreams too. Mm-hmm. Is seeing your work right. displayed mm-hmm. and people right. walking in your designs. We just got back from the Met Gala. We were at a special uh, presentation that they had there, and um, I went for just the weekend. And they were like, "Well, I just saw you. Was that real?" Some people don't think that what I do is real, mm-hmm. and I don't understand why they don't. But you know, you go, you get on a plane because or that's whatever. Their small mentality. Yeah. You get mm-hmm. on a plane and you go to your event and you come back That's it. and they might see me in a dollar tree or something well, well I thought you were in New York yeah that was a couple of hours ago we, we're home now <laughs> as if the yeah. plane can't yeah. fly that right. Right. <laughs> well, I, ideally that because you are amongst the stars doesn't mean that you have to act like right. a star essentially mm-hmm. and they, they're mm-hmm. like what are you doing here mm-hmm. if, if you were out here if this is what you're really right. doing if you're really, then why are you over here right. under this tree with me at this mm-hmm. picnic exactly because because that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. <laughs> exactly. And they wouldn't expect you. If you're doing all these things and then you're in the Dollar Tree. Mm-hmm. You know? I remember years ago, I my wife okay. and I, she said, yeah, I love Dollar Tree. My wife and I, we were in Atlanta. We were visiting some family down there. Mm-hmm. And um, we had gone into, I think it was like a TJ Maxx. And my wife saw, I'm a leader gospel singer, nameless, but saw her in the um, in TJ Maxx. And she mm-hmm. looked at me. She was like, is that so-and-so? Is that so and so? And I was like, I don't know. I couldn't really tell from there. She said, I think that's so and so. And she heard. She said, I can hear you, and it's me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and and you know, we're just sitting there talking and laughing and everything or whatever. You know, and she's like, Oh no, this is this is one of my favorite stores to shop in. You know, mm-hmm. and of course, you just don't think like that. But of course, you. It's just a mindset of people being who they are and being genuine, and that's mm-hmm. what I feel our students need to see Mm -hmm. when we are trying to help them to understand that what they may dream is not out of reach because sometimes we tend to put celebrities and Mm -hmm. other people on On pedestals pedestals. and out of reach when you too can be in that same place where they are as well. But here's the thing. A little black girl in the third grade said she (laughs) wanted to be a fashion designer. And telling that and to did. and telling that to a person that was not African American. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you, well, you think about it. Back then, you you had your um, your Calvin Klein's, your uh, Liz Claiborne. Oh, no, we're going way back there. I'm sixty years you old. See what I'm so yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> give me some of them other designers that were back then. You know, that, you know, you're thinking about those people, right? 
You know, none of them look like us. No. None and that that was my thing that, you know, I wanted to represent who we are. That's why my brand is Everything About Me is Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you have to have the pride in yourself, just like you was talking about celebrities. Mm-hmm. And um, people are just people. That's and, it. And you move, you move with your spirit, you know, because I don't design for everybody because everybody doesn't fit my spirit. Mm-hmm. And so you have to be very careful about who you let into your, your world. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I don't do all the after parties. I don't do all the other things. When I finish the show, that's it. I'm gone. Mm-hmm. You know, I might find some, a, few, you know, a few people and talk and this and that, mm-hmm. but I don't get involved in all the other stuff that goes with the fashion thing. Mm-hmm. So you have to know who you are before you can start. And who you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Before right. you can start, you know, mm-hmm. mingling into anything else. Mm-hmm. And I don't mingle. That's right. okay. <laughs> it's okay. You, you're mm-hmm. where you're supposed to be. Exactly. And where right. you, where right. you right. purposed yourself to be. And right. you're getting your job done. I'm getting mm-hmm. my job and done. And then you're going back leaving. and doing another job. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that's called brand management. Right. Yes. That, right. That's what that's called. It's called brand management mm-hmm. and knowing, you know, what type of brand you want to represent, you know. That's it. All money ain't good money. No. no. And that's why we have, I have a detailed thing that I stick to. I stick to my platform. I don't try to do what anybody else is doing. I don't care what's coming out new. I'm sticking with, I like classic things, things mm-hmm. that are going to last. Mm-hmm. And that's what I stick to. And, you know, that's me. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I think about how blacks started to break in the industry of fashion, and, and going to Fashion Week, you know, not just modeling the clothes, but actually becoming designers of the clothes and all as well, you know. And now you're starting to see more black designers getting national recognition. Um, right. What's the young man's name? Is it Wilson? What is it? I can't remember his first name. He's a designer now who has his clothing in Target. And all, and so I was telling someone. I said, you know what? I if if I can go buy a polo, if I can, right. you know, go go buy other you know types of designers from people that don't look like me. Clearly, I can support this young man as well because he is an African American designer, and I picked right. up some nice things that he's designed um, out of, uh, and that's in Target. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I got a couple of nice little pieces as well. And I think that's what we have to look at. You know, how do we then begin to support our brands? Right. Um, the story behind FUBU mm-hmm. for us by us. You right. know, when I saw the documentary, I was like, "Wow!" Just trying to, you know, not understanding the whole process in which they went through to actually get that brand up off the ground. You right. know, selling stuff out of the trunk of their mm-hmm. cars. You know, so it was just amazing, just in terms of how they got to that place. Well, one thing that's made it easier is social media. Absolutely. Because before, you had to have spend so much money on advertising. And now, it's just putting up a website mm-hmm. and getting people to, to follow you or whatever. And I think a lot of people are taking notice of that, especially with streetwear. Streetwear is really booming. Mm-hmm. You know, you just you can have a your own website. You can have your own company and just have people come to you. You don't have to do work with the middleman or anybody else. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's your own business now. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if someone wanted a design from you, what would they do? What are the steps that they would follow? Uh, they can contact me at atim.biz mm-hmm. or atim at yahoo.com, and um, we can talk. There you go. <laughs> All right, all right. All different types of things. Because we different heard types you working things. with businesses, mm-hmm. you're doing suit, all kinds of different aspects. Um, I can imagine during prom time that you get some calls. I don't do prom dresses. Hmm? I don't do prom dresses. See? Don't call for that. <laughs> because my prices are a little pricey, and I don't, I don't, yeah. Hey, pri- you never know what people's budget is. If they said they wanted something custom from you, you said pricey. That's, that's, whoo, that's something, you talking wedding guy, I ain't mad at you. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, mm-hmm. they're a bit pricey, but it's worth it because it we're talking about, okay, if it takes 100 hours to do this dress, mm-hmm. then I'm going to charge you for 100 hours. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, just like if you, that's how I try to explain to people, if you're working on a job and you work 40 hours a week, you expect to be paid 40 hours a week. So you can't just say, I have some material. Mm-hmm. Can you, can you give me, um, can I give you $100 and you make this? I'm like, no, oh, I can't no. Oh, no. no. We're talking thousands. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Oh my that, that's that's the reason why I wanted to open the door to that conversation because yes. I know that a lot of times what happens is when people see what you do if they think they know you they want you to give them certain oh, no. deals or they want no. you or they assume what your time would be worth but I wanted to put it out there right you can't afford it <laughs> we charge a we charge a minimum of seventy five dollars an hour yeah mm-hmm. yeah and some it all depends um the one the dresses in Dubai those are like well over ten thousand. Mm-hmm. Twenty thousand, and up. it all depends on what they want. And what people don't know about Dubai, the reason why I like Dubai is because if you're um, married, if it's a married man, and no matter how many wives he has, he has to have something for each one of the same value. It, they, they don't have to be alike, but it has to be of equal value. So oh, he, you making man, him ten, a, fifteen just Jesus, I understand yes. what you <laughs> said. The, the math is mathing. Yeah. Listen. Although I wouldn't want to be a mother. But life the ain't life in. You start putting <laughs> all, all them wives and all those dresses. Life ain't life well, in right they now. Have money out there. I'm looking at Gwen like, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> and I, that's what you want to design for because you're like, yeah. listen, you, you can get the same dress in different colors mm-hmm. and I'm going to run you 20 well, it's to not. Me. It's not going to be the same. It's, it's going to be yes. different. All but of it's got to be of equal value. Right. It has to be of equal value. Mm. And I think I've become fearless because when we went to the Bible, when we went to the fashion show, I'm like, I'm just talking to people. And I saw this man sitting there. And um, so I just went up to him and he was the um, sheep, whatever they call him, the head of Dubai. Mm-hmm. And first, you know, I'm like, he's just sitting there. And my husband, like I said, my husband's at my security. He's like, I don't think you should do that. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, he's just sitting by himself. I'm like, it's okay. And so then um, he, he told me to come there and he said, sit down. And he asked me, he said, who are you? And I told him who I was, and he said, do you know who I am? And then he introduced himself to me, and I was like, okay. And so we just started talking. And so he you said, still didn't know who he was? Did he? Yeah, after he told me, oh, okay, I did. After he told, uh-huh. okay. And he said, I, I admire your bravery. And I, I, my husband said, do you know what could have happened to you? I was like, I took your head. I'm like, I wasn't worried about it. He told me to come on, so I came. <laughs> <laughs> I like my head attached to my shoes. I do too, but I like my wallet too. Hey, hey, hey. I'm still back on the fact that you you got to buy for these wives. You know what I'm saying? One is enough. You don't have to be I stuck can, on that because you only got one wife. That's what? I cannot imagine spending the money on more than one. You understand? But just, just Dubai is one of my favorite places. Cause yeah, I'm you, sure. If you never know. <laughs> I mean. I mean, if you've never been, it's it's like. I'm we we can learn a lot from Dubai from their country because they take care of their citizens. Their citizens do not work. The, the Dubai pays all the expenses, everything. What do Who, they do? Where I, they I don't the, understand. Where do they get the money to buy all these dresses? The, the money comes from the oil and everything that they have. They split it amongst the people. If you're a citizen of Dubai, they pay you. Our but is having a stroke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they pay for your housing. They pay for everything. That you just you just enjoy yourself. That's all they do. And also, you cannot have a business uh, if you do not live in Dubai. You cannot have a business there. You have to have a partner. that's a citizen. They don't do anything. They just put their name on the document saying that they approve you, and they get like forty percent of your business. <sighs> mm. Yeah, but it's, you got to be a legal resident. The, the of Dubai. Yeah, but you um, have to be born of Dubai. No. Okay, that's all. What I'm are you talking about? They have a business to live there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And if you marry somebody else, they take everything away from you. If they're not a citizen of Dubai. So you got to give back all those dresses. <laughs> <laughs> you can probably keep whatever you have, but their country is for their people, and I understand that. Wow. And their wealth grows because you can't you can't even buy a house if you don't live if you're not a citizen. You can rent a house for 99 years if that makes any sense. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, so they keep everything for themselves, and they're always looking to um, expand their money to invest in other things. So there, it's a lot of opportunity for growth in that country, and, mm. par- and partnerships and sponsorships. I think mm. we might need to take Sunday brunch to Dubai. Yes, you should for a little visit. Mm-mm. You should. Mm-mm. You the should. The grits don't be gritting in the back. No, like the food. The food, is, <laughs> the food is amazing. It really is. It really is amazing. And there are a lot of business opportunities there too. A lot. Mm. I can imagine. I like that you have those opportunities and that you're able to share those things. A lot of times people learn things and they feel like they want to keep it to themselves, but there's it, no it's, need to do no. that. There's so much room at the top. It is. There's some bottoms that get crowded. Hey. 
And so <laughs> knowledge is that is that way to get to the top. So mm-hmm. I'm so glad. Even just the students, I can imagine these students who may never get an opportunity to travel or maybe no one in their family has traveled. You're giving them those opportunities to mm-hmm. see outside of their four walls. And definitely, because well, you see my website. I, I videotape everything mm-hmm. for my kids. I do lessons during the summer so I can take back for the next year so they can see different countries and see different things, see it firsthand mm-hmm. and talk to the people I interview. Because I have a magazine, too, and I interview people. Wait a minute, yes, Gwen. Yes. Gwen so she, she's a publisher. She got a magazine. Yes, yes. And I interview all types of people and anything I think they're interested in. Because you have to do something you in the classroom with them all the time to keep them interested. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not, it's not just from what the words in the book. It's real life experiences, too. Absolutely. We have a lot of hands-on things that we do. I bring back a lot of things for them to see. And, you know, I reward them because it's full, it's full of rewards, too. Mm-hmm. You know, we work in we get our money for the reward. I know that education is their reward, but they have to have something tangible too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That is. And amazing. you're hiring, you're hiring these babies, mm-hmm. and so that's that's work experience. Right. That's good on their resumes. Right. They're being introduced to people they wouldn't ordinarily meet. Exactly. And they're learning a skill that they can then say that they've done and apply. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I'm just in awe. So tell, tell me about this <laughs> magazine. I mean, every time we turn a corner, you know. It's a, I told you, you have, there's just no way. Well, it was, um, we're changing over now because I just opened up a studio, and it's Studio 119, but it was Successful Moments magazine and Couture 7 magazine, but I'm merging everything together because mm-hmm. I have so many different avenues. I have to have it all in one place. Mm-hmm. But we do everything. Um, I used to be a photographer for Jim Jones and Rough Riders. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people didn't know that they had a, a, um, a pro fo- in the football team in Richmond called the Richmond uh, Rough Riders, mm-hmm. and I used to be his photographer, and okay. he opened a lot of things for my kids, too, mm-hmm. and so, you know, just like, um, he brought in a lot of people. He's not the person that you see on the radio. He's a really sweet human being, if you want to call it that. <laughs> but he's, he's, <laughs> he is a human being. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I don't know what category to put yeah, him yeah, in, yeah, yeah. but um, he's, he's really nice, and he, he loves the kids, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, he does a lot of things for people in our area, and I can still can call, can call him up, and he still helps with whatever we need. Mm-hmm, so that's mm-hmm. a big plus and there were a lot of people on the team and, and everywhere else and it's about networking mm-hmm. you know that um, one door leads to something else and something else leads to something else mm-hmm. and you have to be somebody that they would want to work with After mm-hmm. that part and carry yourself in a way that somebody would want to work with you again mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. remember mm-hmm. how you make them feel right that's very true. Right. I remember that. And if they mm-hmm. want to spend any more time with you. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And because you are working with these kids and really giving, then other people and your partners are giving back too. Right. And it makes them feel good because you make it easy to be worked with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So tell me about, you know, with the with the magazine and your, your photography and, and all of that stuff, does that all play a part into... That in terms of merging your fashion and everything, mm-hmm. but um, it all works together. It's okay. all working together. Um, whether it's Paris Fashion Week, whether it's it's Dubai, whether it's London, that um, I interview. I'm I'm not afraid to go up and talk to someone. Mm-hmm. If they decline, that's fine. You know, yeah. it's it's no it's no hard <laughs> feeling. They tell you it, know, it, huh? Right? They have to tell me. No, my motto is I'm going to keep going until somebody says stop. Mm-hmm. And I do. I really do. And I mm-hmm. I. I love my husband for that because mm-hmm. he's there. He's uh, he's not behind me. He's right there, mm-hmm. like in front, right here, so nobody can get to me. Because mm-hmm. actually, I'm pretty shy, mm-hmm. and people wouldn't really know it, you know. But I do what I do because I love it, mm-hmm. and the shyness goes away when I start getting into whatever you I'm yourself, doing. Yourself, something different when you get into it, Gabrielle. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. There had to be another ego in there somewhere. Yes. Where you're really feeling yourself. Yes. Gabrielle. Come on, Gabby. Yes, she is yeah. something else. Ooh. Gabriella <laughs> Fierce, honey. <laughs> I knew that. Then. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he know. He know how to handle mm-hmm. Gabrielle when she show up. He yes. Know, he know. Oh, yes. yes. Shout out to the good Jesus. lieutenant. Yes. Jesus be a fish <laughs> At this table, y'all never know who gonna show up at this table. Right? Hey, hey, hey. Let me tell y'all. But you, you have to have an alter yes, ego yes. because you have to be able to turn that off mm-hmm. and turn it back on. And sometimes, you know, I forget where I am. Thank you, Jesus, for the staff that works uh-huh. with me because coming back 
in like <laughs> August after I've been all around everybody. Yeah, you've been Gabby. Yes. So, yes. So and I'm really, like, what? We don't have any valet parking here. So, you know? okay. <laughs> so Gwen works for King's Four. Exactly. Right. Gabrielle works for, for Stu- Studio One. What's the name? What's the name? Studio One Nineteen. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> and don't get it twisted. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think I need an alter ego. You see that smile came out differently, right? Right. I need an alter ego. I think that's Oh, you have one. We'll talk Mm -hmm. about it off Mm -hmm. air, though. Okay. All right. All right. We're going to put you out there like that, We have to give him a name. (laughs) Bro. And that's that's just a safety mechanism. Mm -hmm. It's it's a coping Mm -hmm. skill, I have one, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your name? God help you if you come across my name. Mm -hmm. And that's in my name. All all right. (laughs) Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I like that. Now... I'm just hearing all of the nuggets and the lessons. You know, for me, I'm I'm always thinking about what are kids gleaning from this, you know, because you're providing, like I said earlier, that hope. But at the same time, you're giving these kids that rich experience that they can take back, you know, to their own communities and stuff like that or whatever. You know, over the years, how, how long have you been teaching now? 33 years. 33 years. Mm-hmm. And so tell That's me about some, some of your students experience. in terms of what your students are doing now that you, you know, some of them, some highlights from some of your students now. I have one student, um, he just came back from Paris, mm-hmm. and he's an actor, mm-hmm. and uh, he's also a model. Mm-hmm. He's been um, on a lot of reality shows and everything else. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I pushed him. I pushed him hard. What are you going to do next? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do next? Okay, you have more in you than that. Let's mm-hmm. let's you know let's form a plan for you. Let's mm-hmm. do this. Let's do that. But they are doing. I have a lot of students that are doing really great. They have businesses. They um they're leaving. Some of them are leaving the area. Just like sometimes you have to leave the area so you can come back mm-hmm. and inspire 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 someone else. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and um pushing them to um you know get get the education in your field. It doesn't mean you have to do the four year college or whatever, but get educated in your field. Mm-hmm. You know, get some training, get something certified that you you know you know this because right. I, I also um have taken classes at Harvard University mm-hmm. in okay. business mm-hmm. yeah. okay all mm-hmm. right all right so listen Gwen is oh Gabrielle I'm not sure which one <laughs> sitting with her right now but just so much I mean and the thing about it is it's it's still that constant thirst for knowledge and that that's that's key. We always got to keep learning mm-hmm. it it baffles me how people just refuse to keep growing right. like you have to continue to grow mm-hmm. and you're going to change and just like with you're this not generation the same person I saw mm-hmm. 7 years ago I'm just no, going to put that out I know there. I know I've evolved mm-hmm. and um, no. because, yeah, my parent the education part comes from my parents they accepted mm-hmm. nothing less than A's mm-hmm. because they were like this is your only job this is what you do mm-hmm. you your job is to go to school. I never missed a day out of school from I started in Head Start from Head Start to high school, and mm-hmm. I got an award after that. I'm like education has been one of the most important things in my family, mm-hmm. and you know, why, what are, what are you doing now? Are you taking any classes or anything? My mom always asked me about that. Mm-hmm. You know, and we have to we have to keep up with the next generation. We have right. to know what they're doing because you can't teach the kids the way we taught them before. It's a whole different. Ooh, child. It's a whole different animal now yes. to be in the classroom. And they, they know more than we knew mm-hmm. when we were in school mm-hmm. already. Or right. well, different things. Different things, exactly. Yeah. Some of the things that we just understood is not understood. Right, mm-hmm. right. It's, it's a little different. It's a little, uh, yes, it's mm-hmm. very different. But how they obtain the information is so different. I exactly. Mean, you're thinking yeah. about technology. You, you know, you brought up social media and the right. internet and stuff like that or whatever and that's where you're seeing a lot of people like you said the the street gear and street right. wear and stuff like that or whatever they're able to advertise right. their stuff getting all of the likes and mm-hmm. you know really doing um what do they call influencers right yeah, yeah. and so they're able to build their mm-hmm. own network exactly. based on that and that's how they're building right. their own personal brand right and you always and get paid. Yes. Yes, that, that's what I was getting yeah. Yeah. They get, they're making a lot of money doing that. Yes, yes. They are. And remaining relevant the yes. entire time. Yes. So With that's no the overhead. Right. No overhead. Zero mm-hmm. overhead. No, they don't have to have a brick and mortar. They don't have to have anything anymore. All they have to do is have a space where they can use their computer, where they can somebody can see them. Mm-hmm. That's it. Because I will say this, okay? I told my wife it's sorcery. All right? <laughs> it really is. 
Shout out to my Sora. But I've seen, you know, she'll show me these videos right. of, of these women mm-hmm. and the makeup jobs that they're doing. And I'm like, that cannot be the same woman that <laughs> you just you. showed me. Only no, you. it's witchcraft. I'm telling you, when I look at this, I'm like, mm-hmm. that can't be the mm. same I've seen person. Some, I've seen some of those same shenanigans with some of these products that males are using now too. With the hair. Yeah. Yes, man. Yes. I said, yes. sweet baby Jesus, who is that? Mm-hmm. Listen, y'all yes. gonna show up and I'm gonna have me a lace you bubble not. waves I up promise, in here. I promise. <laughs> I promise. I, I shall not, will not receive that. <laughs> I'm gonna return to my high top the phase. Oh, All no, right. Well, but also, let, well, me, let, me, let me give a shout out to the schools because a lot of the vocational programs are really excellent. Mm-hmm. Did they have things like cosmetology, mm-hmm. barbering, um, things that they can do right out of school? Mm-hmm. And then they also Even nursing and they're right. learning how to do some of that stuff mm-hmm. in high school. Yeah, important. Yeah, and it's you know it's not just we have to go to the four year college anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. We need something that they can this tangible when they come out that they can start making money because that's mm-hmm. all they see now. I want to make money. How can I make money? How can I make mm-hmm. money? How can I get this? How can mm-hmm. I get that? And they need it. They because do. The cost of living and the things that they want is expensive. Yes. My mm-hmm. broke best friend is trying to make me be broke. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. don't don't say. Oh, Listen, child. they're expensive. Wait till they get older. Mm-mm. Shout out to my kids. <laughs> they, they will remain broke best friends for a long, long time. time. <laughs> They're trying me, to make you ask up. me how I know. Okay. <laughs> ask, me, ask me how I know. Okay. <laughs> but no, that is that's one of the things I will say. I, I know with you know I can't speak on other school divisions. I can speak on Hampton City Schools, and that's one of the biggest things that we say in terms of as we look at our academies and all. We want to make sure that our kids come out life, career, or college right. ready. Right. And so we look at certification programs and all because with our high schools, as you all know, we have academies, and so we have four high schools, sixteen academies, forty-four pathways, and so within that process, our students can become certified in different areas. You know, for example. Example, there's a certification to become a 911 call center operator. And yeah. we need those. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We do. Kids we do. can graduate making fifty plus, you know, thousand dollars a exactly. year. Exactly. Eighteen years old making mm-hmm. fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars a year as a nine one one versus making nothing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Let's go get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And so that puts our kids in a place for those who can go directly to college mm-hmm. to go, but then there's some who may have to work right. while they're in college. Now they have something that's that's tangible. Mm-hmm. You and know? lucrative. Right. Exactly, and and there for kids who who work like I worked while I was in college. I was right. a bartender, mm-hmm. you know, and so yeah, I, I mix a little drinks. Funny, <laughs> old enough to drink, he was. I mix a little drink, and I want to I want to <laughs> shout out Brooke because she went to the um, cosmetology program mm-hmm. and she started working. She got her license. She started working right after high school. Now she owns her own salon. Mm-hmm. Shout out to you, Brooke. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing, you know, when you have those types of opportunities, those are the things that our young people. People need to see. They need to see folks like Gwen. Uh, uh, get, you show Gabrielle. Gabrielle. Yes, <laughs> one of the two. When they're in but place. The, exactly. Yeah. But they need to see that mm-hmm. because now it's tangible. It's you, you're able to touch them, and it's not just someone from New York. You know. Right. This person is right here with us, you know, and that's why, you know, I have to give a shout out to people like uh, Missy Elliott and Pharrell Mm -hmm. because they come back to this community. Alan Iverson, they come back and they give back to their communities. And that's a huge plus because guess what? Just like you made it, there's some kid that looks up to you, and 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 they say, hey, if if if, if Chuck can make it to the league, I can make it to the mm-hmm. league. If Missy can become a, a Grammy Award winning uh, musician and mm-hmm. artist, I can do that. You, you know, and so that's important. And if Gabrielle can design. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and make twenty thousand dollars a gown. I can do that <laughs> and charge somebody for their five wives and make right. twenty thousand dollars a Listen, gown. Too. I'm about to pick up a needle and three. <laughs> Listen to <laughs> me. <laughs> it's out there. And what? Why I wanted you to also be on the show is so that people can see that we can do many different. Things. We can do mm-hmm. many different we, things. We don't have to do just one or two things. No. We're not just good in one or two areas mm-hmm. in the world. We we can be in any avenue. Any avenue. Any and when. They don't make room for you. You make you your can own create room. your own space. And you feel comfortable in the room when you're the only one. Mm-hmm. I've been thousands of times, I've been the only one. 
-hmm. And I have no fear of anything Mm -hmm. because we're all people and we're all here working together. And my work speaks for itself. That part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're they're buying it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they're loving it. And then, exactly. and, and indeed, I got to wear it. I didn't buy it. I just, I just, Listen. I modeled it. All right. <laughs> well, well, well there, there, there are two things here. You know, one, when we, what we're doing now with, with the schools and the academies, we're, we're, we're teaching students to dream about jobs that really don't exist now. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that that's a plus. But exposure is also key. So hearing you talk about when you go to places like Paris and Dubai, you're videotaping, you're filming. They may not be able to go there, but thank God for technology that now they're able to see what it's like. Because truthfully, children mm-hmm. become what they see. Right. And one thing about it, too, is if I have a show somewhere and I feel like the kids can get there, I'm going to insist that they be my models. Mm -hmm. They're not professional models or whatever, but I have to say so on what goes on in the show, my segment of the show. And Mm -hmm. I will bring my students with me. They've been in New York Fashion Week. They've been, you know, I don't take them out of the country, but anything around here that I can get them in, I do. Mm -hmm. And if I see a student that has a talent, then I can, you know, Share his talent with someone else. Hey, mm-hmm. this this young man. Um, we have a young man. He was he was a really good rapper, and I, I you know gave his demo to other people too. Mm-hmm. You know, people started calling him. But that's it. One hand washes the other. You know, we're all here to help the students mm-hmm. and help everyone. And if I see a need that the student has, I can hook them up with somebody that I know personally is going to take care of them. Not somebody they're going to meet online. It's going to you know just take their money or whatever. But somebody that's actually going to help them open the door for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mentors are important. Yes. <clears throat> I, I learned from one of my great mentors that mm-hmm. your friends love you just the way you are. Right. But your mentors love you too much to leave you where you are. Right. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it's good to have great mentors in mm-hmm. your life that can open up avenues and doors for you and that you don't have to recreate those things. Exactly. Absolutely. And they're the ones that are helping to push you into your dreams. Yes. Sometimes dreams that you don't even realize that have been put in you right. at this point. You know, they see things in you that you don't see in 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 yourself Mm -hmm. and for you what you're doing some of these kids probably don't have the the encouragement to believe in themselves right you know but the fact that you're taking the time to believe in them because that's that's also one of the best things we can ever do for a child is to believe in them exactly and to let them know that i believe in you and you have what it takes and i expect you exactly to meet my expectations Mm -hmm. we know even through research that students meet the expectations of their teachers so if you don't expect Mm -hmm. much from them you won't get much Mm -hmm. and so the fact that you expect them to be great Mm -hmm. i expect you to create a business i expect you to try to create something from nothing right because that's often what we have to start with nothing Mm -hmm. so you need to be able to create something out of what you have and i expect you to do that that is the expectation then they find themselves meeting that expectation Mm -hmm. and if they don't you get to do that scaffolding and helping Mm -hmm. them get to that place of where they need to be, which is what great teachers and mentors do. And one thing that we have is um, creative writing Mm -hmm. that I let them explore their feelings. And, um, you know, it's it's funny because at first they're, you know, they're, timid about doing it, about sharing mm-hmm. different things. And then, you know, the more you do it, the more they get out, the more they want to do it, the mm-hmm. more, you know, comfortable they feel with it. And they start evolving. Mm-hmm. They do. It's, and it's the ones who have been quiet and shy. Next thing you know, I'll go first. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> and they start to feel themselves right. and find their other ego. Right. Mm-hmm. We have, a, um, our classroom is a safe place. Mm-hmm. That there's no bullying. There's no laughing. And there's no wrong answer. Mm-hmm. If you, you know, if you have something that you need to say or whatever, we give you space as long as it's appropriate for class. Mm-hmm. So we, we help them with whatever they need help with. And that's, that's necessary yeah. being creative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That freedom of expression. Yes. Mm-hmm. That is that is so important and that, and that that's key. Mm-hmm. You know, really keeping these kids focused. You know, I could talk about education and kids. Oh, okay. I could too. Yeah. <laughs> that's our thing. Because that, that's, that's important. Mm-hmm. You know, I always tell folks, I said, you know, we have to make sure we're creating people who can pour into Social Security or right. something. Because right. they're going to be the ones that take care of us. Yes. You know? They're the ones that, that that will create the next, you know, type of technology mm-hmm. that, that will help, you know, my knee not ache in the morning right. or okay. something like exactly. that or whatever. A new stretch for you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And speaking of technology, we're not just fashion design. We create things, you know, with their imagination. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is what you have. This is the problem. How are you
you going to solve it with technology? What what difference can you do that we ha- that hasn't been done? You know, mm-hmm. what can you create? It's not just using the same old thing. It's what method would you do if you had, like, say, if you had a hundred dollars, or we start out with ten dollars. If you had ten dollars, what kind of business could you create to help somebody else? Mm-hmm. You know, what can you do with? This? I would like to know that myself because yeah. now that that is a math problem right there. That's Jesus feeding some people fish and oh, we, bread, you know. We just we just we just stock market. We do everything, See? cash app, everything. Mm-hmm. You know they have to have their parents' permission, but we do all that. Wow! And they made they made money. Did they? Yes, they did. What's the most that one of your students has ever made? As a group, we did one project together, and I don't know how I found out about Hertz, but I had a feeling about Hertz. We made twenty five hundred dollars in ten minutes, and when it got up to twenty five hundred, I said, "That's it." That's it. That's enough right there. That's 10 minutes, $2,500. Wow. That's the best 10 minutes of your yeah. life. <laughs> I got 10. Look, call me with okay. them stars. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna have to talk about that. So, so Gwen is a, she she she's gonna be a uh, what's a financial advisor too. We, hey, we do we do, we do it all. Gabrielle, Gabrielle, <laughs> listen. We gonna, next time we bring you to the show, there might be a third name because you know we evolving and growing. Who knows exactly, what's gonna happen? Exactly. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I have truly enjoyed this segment and time at, at the table because of course like I said everything I'm, I'm all things kids mm-hmm. and, and education and just just hearing about not only your business but the fact that you're able to bring that experience to the kids so I thank you for being that type of educator that opens the minds of, of our kids so thank, thank you, you so much for being here so I've enjoyed this, um, this, this time at the table with you as always so but That's all we have this week at the table. I'm Dr. Richard Mason. I'm Dr. Tamara Williams. Thank you for joining us right here on Smooth 88.1. W-H-O-V, the essence of H-U. Keep your four. Someday we'll be able to measure the power of words. I think they are things, I think they get on the walls, they get in your wallpaper, they get in your rugs, in your upholstery, in your clothes, and finally into you. Thank you for joining us at the table. Tune in next Sunday at 1 p.m. for more delicious topical recipes for life on the Sunday Brunch. On Smooth 88.1 WHOV.